Snow and mod are two materials that are pretty hard to set up, especially if you want the player to leave traces behind him. In today's tutorial we are going to learn how to do that and we are going to use render targets. Alright, so for this tutorial we are going to use scene depths and as well we are going to use custom depth to check if we want to deform the snow or not. So first we are going to create a material, I'm going to call this matte underline uh, depth. Alright, and in here we are going to get two scene textures. So scene texture, let's copy this and paste it. And for the first one we are going to get custom depth and for the first one we are going to get scene depth. Alright, now for both from color we are going to mask to have a component mask and we are going to mask the red color. Alright, now we are going to subtract from the first one the second one. We are going to divide this and here we are going to have a scalar parameter. So uh, just keep as pressed and then click somewhere here and you're going to get a scalar parameter. Alright, and let's call this offset. We can set the default value to be 20 or 25, whatever you want. Then we are going to saturate this. So we are going to get a value between 0 and 1. And then we are going to invert this by having a 1 minus. Alright, now let's go into the material node. And in here we are going to go to material domain, post process, and then we are only going to have emissive color. And let's plug this in here. And now this should be done. This color parameter is going to decide how far a pixel can be from the surface of a landscape in order to deform it. We are going to continue by creating a new blueprint class. Then we are going to create an actor. And let's call this render target underscore bb. Let's get in here and we are going to get a scene capture component 2D. And now we are going to go to the rotation and set the Y to be 90 and the Z to be 90 as well. If we are going to attach an arrow to the scene capture component, you can see that it is going to point upwards and this is exactly what we, uh, what we want to have. We don't want it downwards or in any other rotation. Now we are going to go into our scene capture and we are going to go to projection. We are going to set the projection type to be orthographic and also we are going to need to have a texture target. So we are going to go into content browser, right click, materials and textures and we are going to create a render target. This is going to be called a render target. Right, and we are going to plug this in here. For the capture source this should be final color. And then we are going to go to post process materials. We are going to create a new element. We are going to have an asset reference and it is going to be the material that we just created. Put this in here and it should be done. Also what you could do is to change the ortho width from 512 to 10,048. Then that is going to be 2048 by 2048, which is approximately 20 meters. Now let's create a new material parameter collection by going into the content browser, right click and material parameter collection. I'm going to call this snow MPC. All right, in the scalar parameters, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to give this the name of the name size. Then don't change the default value. Now let's go in the render target BP. Here, even begin play, we are going to set color parameter value. The collection is going to be the one that we just created and the parameter name is going to be size. We are going to get the scene capture component. We are going to get width, so get ortho width and that is going to be plugged in the parameter value. All right, now we'll need to create a new material. I'm going to call this snow underline material and this is going to represent the material of our landscape that we are going to create a little bit later. So let's get inside this. And here I'm going to have a two vector tree, two constant tree vector, all right? And we're going to have a linear interpolation, all right? So for the first one, I'm going to choose a light blue. And for the second one, I'm going to have a dark brown. All right, and now we are going to need to set the alpha and also we are going to have here some tessellation. So let's go in here search for tessellation and we are going to have flat tessellation. 
Also for the metallic and specular we are going to have here a constant with the value 0. Now we are going to see how we can do the actual tessellation. So first we are going to get here our world position. We are going to mask the red and green channel because we want to get the X and Y UVs. And also here we are going to multiply with two uh, with a constant two vector which, are, which is going to be minus 1 and 1 because we want to flip the X UV. Then here we are going to add something. But first we are going to get a collection parameter. We are going to choose our collection parameter that we created. We are going to get the size. We are going to divide this by 2. We are going to add this in here. Then we are going to divide once again. But this time we are going to divide with size. And this should be it. Now before going any further, we will need to create a new material function. So let's go into content browser, materials and textures, material function, and in here we are going to have mask UV. Let's open it and let's get an input. Alright, input type should be function input vector2. Then here we are going to have a custom. The output type is going to be float1. And let's go here into input name and that's going to be UV. And we are going to plug this in the result. Now we are going to need to code something in here. So if you don't know what this is going to do, just copy me. So we are going to have here an if statement. And we are going to get uv.x less than 0 or, or uv.x bigger than 0 or uv.y less than 0 or uv.y bigger than 1 we are going to return so return 0 let's close the brackets and also we are going to have here return 1 at the end so if any of these are going to be true we are going to return 0 and if none of them are true we are going to just return 1 and this should be it let's compile actually let's apply and see if this is working so now it should and let's go back to the snow material all right back into our snow material we are going to drag and drop the material function in here uh, we are going to plug this in the input then we are going to get here a texture sample we are going to get the render target all right and we are going to plug this in here let's multiply these okay and now we are going to flip them with one minus. Now this is going to be the alpha. Then we are going to multiply this with a scalar parameter. Let's say tessellation multiplier. All right, this is going to be in the B. The default value should be 25, or that's what I want. And then I think we'll need to multiply this once again. And we are going to have here vertex normal WS that is going to go in the world displacement and for tessellation multiplier we are going to have constant 1 so constant with the value 1 and that should be it let's apply and let's see if this is working all right now you might notice that by default our snow is going to be brown first we'll need to flip this upside down so the white is going to be b and our brown color is going to be a and now it is going to be the big color which is going to be white as you can see and before leaving our snow material let's go to the main material and also check here to sided okay now it's time to test if this is working or not so let's create a landscape real quick i'm going to have here 4x4 all right and uh now let's see if we can see our character all right so what i'm going to have on the top left corner is the render target that we just created but currently there is a problem, so we need to make sure that we are going to fix that. We will need to go here, where we did all this thing with the lerp, and from the texture sample, instead of getting uh, all of these channels, we are only going to get the red one. Alright, then let's go to our landscape and let's apply the snow material. Okay, now it is looking like this, because of the unbuilt lining. Let's get a render target blueprint. Let's position this to 0, 0 and my minus 2000. And let's see if this is working. So now you can see it is black and there are some white things. Those are the, pl the player's foot, as you can see. Currently, our material has two problems. 
the landscape material has flickering and also there are no traces behind our character. So let's see how we can fix both of these. First to fix the flickering you need to set the negative Z bound. For me I'm going to set minus 1000 but this is way too much and you should not use this much. Just play around with a lot lower values and see which is going to fit your game. But since this is not a game for me I'm just going to put here a big number to make sure that I'm not getting any flickering. Now let's see how we can leave traces behind our character. We are going to create a new material and this is going to be called uh, draw to persistent. Alright, but first let's go into our render target. In here we are going to create dynamic material instance. It is going to be draw to persistent. We are going to promote this to a variable. I'm going to call this draw to P math, right? And then we are going to need to clear render targets. So clear some render targets, and those are the render target. So the first one that we have, that we have, and then we're going to create a new one, which we're going to use a little bit later. Not maybe texture, but render target. All right. So render target persistent. All right. And now we are going to put this in here. Now before setting up the material, let's create a custom event in here. So add custom event, draw to render target. And we are going to get a node called draw to render target. Draw material to render target, I believe. Here the material is going to be a draw to persistent material. And the render target is going to be the render target we just created. So let's put this in here. Now we will need to call this custom event, so we are going to get here from event begin play, we are going to get a sequence, we are going to get a set timer by function name, the function name is going to be this one, we are going to check looping and the time is going to be 0.01. Alright, now we are going to set up the material, we are going to go to the main material node, here in the blend mode, we are, no, actually to the shading model we are going to have on lit. And for the emissive color, we're going to get a texture sample. And the texture sample is going to be the render target, the first one which we created, not the persistent one. Let's plug that in here and let's apply. And now there are just two things more to do to get the snow material to be perfect. First, we we'll need to go back to our material depth. And in here, we are going to set up some things so the traces are going to remain behind the player. We are, get here, we are going to get here an add node, we are going to saturate this once again, we're going to plug this in the emissive, emissive color, and here from B we are going to get texture sample, and the texture sample is going to be the render target persistent, so not the first one but the second one. Let's apply and now let's test if this is working or not. So as you can see now there are going to be traces behind my character, but let's see what's going to happen if we are going to get out of the boundaries of the render target. As you can see now we are not going to have any more traces. So now let's see how we can move the render, uh, the render target along with the character. Alright, now it's time to see how we can move the render target. So we are going to create here a new macro. So snap pixel to grid. And in here we are going to have a math expression. And I already have a math expression, so I'm just going to paste it in here. Basically what's going to do is that I'm going to take the player X, I'm going to take the player Y and the pixel word size. Let me move this above if I can, but I can't currently. All right, these are going to be all inputs and the return value is going to be a, uh, a vector and it's going to be an output. And this is the expression right here and you can copy that as well. Back into our event graph, we are going to create here a custom event. I'm going to call this move render target. I'm going to create a new variable which is going to be a vector to the move offset. All right, here I'm going to set the move offset. I'm going to split the struct pin so I can set them. I can set both of them. All right, here I'm going to get a snap pixel to grid. I'm going to get get character get player character. I'm going to get actor location. I'm going to split the struct pin for this as well, and I'm going to plug. I'm going to plug X in X and Y in Y. For the pixel word size, I'm going to have here float multiplied with float. Then I'm going to get a scene capture component. 
get with ortho. Alright, and from here we are going to have a float divided by float, and that is going to be 1 divided by 256. Alright, then we are going to get actor location, we are going to subtract these vectors, we are going to split extract pin, and the x is going to go in the x, and the y in the y. Then we are going to add local add world offset, I believe that's it. Alright, split extract pin, split extract pin. Alright, and now we are going to set here a parameter set vector parameter. Alright, but currently we don't have one, so we are going to create one right now. Just set the collection to be the one that we created, and now we are going to set, we are going to create a new vector parameter. Now that we are in our collection parameter, we are going to create a vector one. I am going to name this capture location and then set the default value. In here we are going to compile and set, actually we are going to save and then compile once again. First set the collection as I said, right, and then we are going to set the parameter name. For the parameter value we are going to get actor location, the target is going to be self and we are just going to plug this in here. And now we are going to need to, to make some changes in our materials. Now before we are going to multiply in our snow material, what we are going to do is to subtract. We are going to subtract, we are going to plug this in the multiply. Here we are going to get a mask component, so component mask for the red and green. And in here we are going to have a collection parameter. And the collection is going to be just snow and the parameter name is going to be the capture location. And that should be it for this material. Into our draw to persistent material, we are going to unplug the texture sample. We are going to get here a constant tree vector. We are going to promote this to a variable, and I'm going to name this offset. Then we are going to mask the red and green. We are going to flip the x by multiplying with minus one and one. So minus one here and one in here. Then we are going to add to this a texture coordinate. So text coordinate. Then what we want to do is to get a material function that we created. Alright, this in here and this in here. And then we are just going to multiply these two and get the red channel and plug that into the emissive. Let's apply and that should be it for this material as well. And now the only thing that we have to do is to test if this is working or not. And as you can see it is working indeed. Uh, if this is not working for you, make sure that in your character you are going to have your mesh, so your mesh is going to have its custom depth enabled, so let's here have custom depth, as you can see, and also the custom depth tends to be 1. And this is pretty much all for this tutorial, I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, and if you like the tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to catch you in the next one, goodbye.